Greetings again today in the name of Jesus Christ, our wonderful Lord and Savior. Now we're glad to see you here in the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church today. We welcome every one of you. We appreciate your presence. It's always good to meet in the house of the Lord. We have some visitors with us today. We're glad to have them paying us a visit. Always glad to have visitors here at Northside. And to you that's listening out in the radio listening audience, we most certainly appreciate you tuning in to the Northside Baptist Church Hour that's coming to you live right from the auditorium of the Northside Church here in Athens, Georgia. Now, this is Preacher Edward speaking. We're hoping during the next hour we can be an inspiration to many of you and you in the radio listening audience. If you know of a shut-in or someone that's not in church today that would appreciate our ministry, then get on the phone right now and give them a ring. Have them to tune in and get to Northside Baptist Church Hour. And you'll be doing them a favor and you'll be doing us a favor. If you have your Bible today, turn to Luke chapter 22. While you're turning there, I'd like to say to the radio listening audience in particular, we record our Sunday morning messages, the music and the message. I've had several to ask me about last Sunday morning's message. We do have it on cassette tape. It is available. If you'd like to have last Sunday morning's message or either today's or any in the past or the future, just write in and request it. Enclose a gift of $5, at least $5. Help pay for radio time and request the message you want. We'll put it on cassette tape. We'll get it right out to you. And we covet your prayers and your support for this ministry. My mailing address is Virgil Edwards, P.O. Box 501, Athens, Georgia, 30603. Now you pray for me and write to me. I've been sending out a sermon entitled, Why Christians Suffer. Today would be the last time I'll make mention of that message. And if you'd like to have the sermon, it'll be yours at your request. Just write in and say, Preacher Edward, send me the sermon on why Christians suffer. I'll get it right in the mail to you. Remember that mailing address is Post Office Box 501, Athens, Georgia. Just write Preacher Edwards or Virgil Edwards. We'd be glad to hear from you. Turn to Luke chapter 22. Now, we thank God for what this great day stands for. We thank God for this great nation in which we live. For the sacrifice has been paid by our young men in order we might have this liberty. And we want to keep it like it is, but we do know it's getting... Seemingly getting worse uh, sin-wise. The land is filled with cults. We have some 3,000 cults in America today. And they're on the increase. That's a sign of the times. If you saw the news last week, you saw where this false prophet, this demon possessed, no doubt, son, uh, Yon Moon, yonder in New York, performed marriage ceremonies for thousands of his uh, followers who are deceived and led astray by this cult. They came from all over different parts of the world, and he uh, united them in uh, he, what he called matrimony, and there, of course, some of them had known each other over two weeks. Some of them could not speak e each other's language. They were matched up by their leaders of this cult, and some of them not knowing the person they were married to not more than two weeks. Now, all of that is satanic. That's of Satan. God is not in that. This man is a false prophet. He said to him, he said himself that he could be another Messiah. He lied under oath. He said he had talked to Jesus personally. He said he had talked to Moses personally. And some of the other prophets he talked to personally. He said that under oath. He lied under oath. That man is of the devil satanic to the core, and deceive multitudes of young people in this nation. Amen. That man should be driven out of this nation and never allowed to put his foot back on American soil again. I cannot understand why our leaders don't do something about it and get that man back to Korea where he belongs and get him out of this nation. He's poison to this country. He's of the devil. And also on the news this morning, I... Heard about this man and his wife, so religious. They wanted to be shot by the policeman that they might be raised again in three days. They took over a bus. They shot it out with the police enforcement officers. They were shot. They, didn't, they were not killed by the officers. 
And she in turn then finished killing her husband, killed herself, saying that we will be resurrected in three days. We are God's dear children, and we love God, and we want to die that we might be raised again in three days. That's another cult called the, the children of God, and it's very dangerous. It's poison of Satan, and the cults on the increase in this land every week. Some 3,000 of in America now. They are multiplying, and the devil is having a heyday uh, with the cults today. And the devil doesn't care how much religion you get or how many cults you join as long as you don't get right with God, get saved, and know the truth. And you need to be aware of these many cults in the land today and the only increase, and the devil is really having a revival with the cults in the land today. That's why it's so important. That you stand by churches that, that believes the truth. Stand by a camp like Camp Maranatha and Brother Brock and those people. And people that preach the word of God on radio or TV or in their churches that's true to the gospel. And preach the whole counsel of God. It's imperative that you stand by these because of the rise of so many false doctrines and cults in the land today. Now that is not my message. I'm giving you time to turn to Luke 22. I'm going to speak on a very uh, unusual subject. I'm going to speak on the rooster Jesus said would crow. Didn't you know the Bible tells us that there would be a rooster that would do some crowing? And Jesus uh, told us about that. On our last tour to the Holy Land, we were visiting the, the house of uh, Simon Peter where he denied the Lord. And we saw some chickens out in the yard and this statement was made. Someone said, I wonder if that rooster going yonder is not a descendant of the rooster that crowed that night when Simon Peter denied the Lord. Now, I'm not saying he was, but it's, he could be. There's a possibility. The rooster and the chickens were there at the same place at least. And we, we do know that a rooster crowed and, of course, God used the barnyard rooster. And in Luke chapter 22, beginning with verse 31, we find these words. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that may sift you as wheat. But I prayed for thee that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And he said unto him, Lord, I'm ready to go with thee both into prison unto death. Through 62 of the same chapter of Luke 22. And Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately while he yet spake, the, co the cock crew. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter, and Peter remembered the words of the Lord, how he said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. Now here we find a barnyard rooster used of God. Here is one rooster that really entered into the ministry. He had been called, he's been called a sanctified rooster. Because Jesus foretold of his crowing or his preaching through his crowing, if you please. Jesus said, a rooster will crow, Simon, and you'll deny me three times before that rooster crows. Now, many of our old timers, my grandmother, was somewhat superstitious about roosters crowing at a certain time. If a rooster got in the house and crowed at the wrong time, my grandmother would say, get that rooster out from under this house that's a sign somebody's going to die in this house. Get the rooster away. She didn't believe in that rooster crowing at a certain time under her house. She's very superstitious about that. But we find in the Bible that a rooster was used of God. And if God can use a barnyard rooster, God can use you as his own precious child redeemed by his precious blood. First of all, I want to notice that this rooster did what he could. The Bible said he crowed. He did what he could. He did what God said he would do. He did not try to do what he could not do. He did what he could do. That's exactly what God requires of us to do what we can. Not what we can't do, but what we can do. Now this rooster did not try to bark like a dog. That would have been silly. That would sound terrible. If this rooster had been trying to bark like a dog... He did not try to sing like a canary. He did not try to talk like a parrot, but he crowed like a rooster. That's exactly what he should have done. That's what God wanted him to do. And God moved up on him to crow at a certain time, and he did. 
Now we find in the Bible, God calls some to be evangelists, some teachers, some pastors, and so forth. Every man to his calling. God called me to be a pastor, do pioneer work in the radio ministry, and, and uh, do evangelistic work as we have the opportunity to do so. Brother Brock out here, God has given him the ability and talent now to minister and operate Camp Maranatha. I couldn't do that job. God didn't call me to do that. That's not my calling, but he's gifted to that. He and his good wife, and they do it well and do a wonderful job. What God wants us to do, he gives us the ability to do that thing he wants us to do. And God wants us to do what we can do and what he calls us to do. And each person has his calling. He has his place in God's work. And he can know the will of God. And he needs to serve God faithfully in the will of God. Number two, his job was not considered important by the world. Now the average person would not consider the rooster crowing to have a, a job worthwhile. They would pay that no attention. I was born on a farm. I've heard a rooster crow many times. I felt like ringing the necks many times when they crow early in the morning because I knew it'd soon be time to get up and go to the field and go to work. But they crowed and people didn't pay it too much attention. No doubt every one of you at some time or another you heard a rooster crow. Now his crowing was not highly esteemed by the world. His crowing was a common thing. His little bit was usually unnoticed. But this rooster did something that God wanted him to do. His coin seemed no doubt a foolish thing at times. I've seen a time when I thought when a rooster crowed, it was a foolish thing to be doing at that particular time. And no doubt these people may have thought the same thing. Why is a rooster crowing at this time of the night? Uh, he, he's crowing at a wrong time, probably maybe they thought. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 18, the Bible said, For the preaching of the cross is them that perish foolishness, but it does which are saved, it is the power of God. Now when this rooster crowed, some of them might have thought, Well, that's foolish. Some paid it no attention. But there was one man in that crowd that did not take that crowing lightly. Now the preaching of the cross may, seems, may seem foolish unto this world, unto the unsaved, but under God's people, the preaching of the cross is the power of God under salvation. That's why we preach it. That's why we tell the story. And there's one man standing in that group that had been bragging about what he would do, that had denied the Lord, denied being an apostle. And this particular man in that group, the crowing of this rooster was not without great and powerful significance. And so although it may seem foolish to some, it got the job done. Although our efforts, our preaching, our serving God seems foolish to some people, but God said to preach the gospel, preach the cross of Christ, tell the story of Jesus, and get the job done. Then we come to thought number three, and that is this rooster was not ashamed. He was not ashamed of his crowing. He crowed before all the people standing around uh, that palace, that building. And no doubt he crowed as loud as he could. He was not one bit bashful. He was not one bit ashamed to crow because he was a rooster and that was his job. Now God's people should not be ashamed to witness for Jesus. You're God's child and God has called you to witness, to be a witness, to serve him, to be a testimony to tell people about the Lord, to give your own testimony and do something for Jesus. Don't be ashamed to do it. How many of you ever talk about Jesus on your job? How many of you talk about Jesus among those you associate with or in your community or even in your own home? You should not be ashamed to talk about Jesus. He crowed before them all. He was not ashamed. His crowing did not embarrass him. Not at all. Maybe other chickens in the barnyard, it did not embarrass them. That was his job. He was crowing because he was a rooster and he crowed at a certain time. They were not embarrassed. They probably didn't pay too much attention. But there's one person in that crowd, that rooster crowing really got a hold of him. Now his crowing did not make him want to, want to quit, you know. A, a lot of people, they say, well... If I got to serve God, if I need to do this, if I should do this, I think I'll just quit. 
Now his crowing didn't make him want to quit crowing. He knew that he was a rooster. That was his job. And it was a time for him to crow and he was going to do it. And he did. His crowing did not make him blush. A lot of times Christian people, whenever they identified with God's work or God's people or have a Bible under their arm or certain ones come around, they say, well, uh, I wonder what to think about me carrying this Bible. All Christians should carry their Bibles with them, especially to the house of God. A lot of times young people say, well, I'm not going to take my Bible because someone might see me, some of my friends, my schoolmates might see me, and they'll say, well, he must be awful religious or she's a fanatic. See, they have their Bibles. You need to carry your Bible to the house of God if you're a young person, if you're a child, if you're an adult, regardless of who you are, if you're a Christian, carry that Bible with you to the house of God. One of the greatest testimonies of the fundamental independent Baptist churches is the fact that their people carry their Bibles with them to the house of God. Several years ago, I was invited to attend a denomination I won't mention. It's the most modern and apostatized, I guess, in this nation, one of the largest. And I was asked to attend the meeting for a friend's sake, and I did. And it was during the summertime, and, and uh, the church is full of people, and I did not see the first Bible in the church or with the people or bringing their Bibles, not even the pastor. And when the visiting evangelist got up, he took a book. It looked like a song book. And out of that, he read. It was a modern translation. And he told stories. He gave poems. And there'd been no need of him giving an invitation because there's nothing preached. There was no power of God. The word of God was not honored. They went through a little formality. And that was it. Dead as four o'clock in the morning. Not a Bible in the church as far as I could see brought by anyone. I thank God for Christian people that's not ashamed to carry that Bible. I never go without uh, my testament in my pocket. God saved me many years ago. I've always had a testament in my pocket. And when I go to worship God, I carry my Bible with me to the house of God. Make that a habit. Never go without one. And so keep one in hand at all times. In Romans chapter 1 and verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God under salvation to everyone that believeth. Don't be ashamed of that book. This is the most blessed book in the world. I love that book. Our forefathers, the church fathers, died for that book. I thank God for it. I'm not ashamed of it. I'm glad we have the word of God, the Bible. And it makes me feel good to be able to go to the house of God with that book under my arm. Dwight L. Moody said the greatest sermon he ever saw was a man walking down the street with a Bible under his arm. Thought number four, this old rooster was faithful. He crowed at the given time regardless. Now it was nighttime. I don't care how dark it might have been. He was faithful. He had a certain time to crow and he crowed at that particular time. Now some of you people listening out in the radio listening audience, maybe some of you here in the auditorium, you have chickens around your place. And if you'll notice that old rooster crows about the same time every morning at crowing time. He crows. He has a job to do. He's faithful in doing his job. Isn't it wonderful when God's people realize they have responsibility and there's a certain time when they ought to be in the house of God. That's a time designated for worship. Like 10 o'clock on Sunday morning, 11 or uh, 6 o'clock or 7.30 on Sunday evening, Wednesday night, uh, doing revivals. There's a time when God's people ought to lay everything aside and be in God's house. There's coming a time when you're going to die and face God and there's nothing any more important than what you do for the Lord. You shouldn't let anything hinder you unless you're sick or absolutely providence to hinder you. Keep you from your post of duty but it's time to be there. He was faithful. He crowed whether he felt like it or not. Now the rooster might have been feeling bad. Or he might have been feeling good. Who knows? But he crowed. A lot of people have come to the house of God feeling somewhat down and out physically. But they came and they did their job and they felt better when they left. So he crowed whether he felt like it or not. He crowed whether it was raining or not. He, I don't know. It might have been raining. The wind might have been blowing. But he crowed anyway. He crowed that night. 
And he didn't let a little rain stop him. If it was raining, that matter not with him. People love God's not going to let a few drops of rain keep them from God's house. The greater effort that you put forth in going to the house of God and serving God, whether it be a rain, a storm, or whatnot, the greater effort you put forth, the prouder you should be about that because you're doing a little something extra and putting forth a special effort to be there. You ought to do it because you love the Lord. Now, he crowed in season out of season. Now, whether it was summertime, springtime, wintertime, or whatnot, this rooster crowed. Because it was cold or hot, it didn't bother him. He, he had a time to crow and he crowed. Now, God's people shouldn't let the seasons of the year hinder them from doing what they should do for God. In 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 2, the Bible says, Preach the word to be in season out of season. Winter, summer, spring, or fall, be faithful in serving God. Number five, his job was not popular. Who ever heard tell of a rooster crowing being very popular? I've known people throw rocks at them for crowing. I've known people drive them away from the house for crowing. Now, a rooster crowing is not a popular thing. You know why? One reason, he wakes people up. A lot of times early in the morning, that old rooster rare back and he'll wake them up. He'll wake up all the hens in the hen house. He'll wake up the dogs and the cats. He'll wake up the people. He's not popular. No doubt some of them thought, I wish that rooster dropped dead and stopped that crowing. That didn't bother him because he was not popular. It didn't stop him. He had a job to do. And at a certain time in the morning, he knew what time it was. He said now to himself, it's time that I wake up this crowd around here, brother. And he ran back and let her go. Now, whether they liked it or not, he crowed. And his job was to crow loud. Now, little old rooster is kind of squeaking around. Have you ever heard a young rooster trying to learn to crow? I have. When I was a little boy, I'd see a little old young rooster trying to learn to crow. That sounds terrible. I could crow better than he could. And, but this rooster crowed loud. When they grow older and got ready to do the job of crowing, they crowed so people could hear them. There'd be no point in a rooster crowing if it couldn't be heard. If I had a rooster and you couldn't hear him crow and just kind of whispered it out, I, I say he's a poor rooster. Now his job was to crow loud. His job was to arouse all the ones around him, the hens, the guineas, the turkeys, the ducks, and the human beings and whatnot. That was his job. He had a job to do, and brother, he let her go at early in the morning. You could hear him for maybe a mile around crowing. Have you heard a rooster crow a mile away? I have. You can hear him for a mile around early in the morning, and they crow. His job was sometimes, would sometimes make folks angry. Now, we're to serve God whether people like it or not. If it makes them mad, what of it? The Bible tells us the apostles preached, Jesus preached, people became very angry and killed some of them and put the Son of God to death. Now, if it makes people angry, we can't help that. We're to preach the Word of God whether they get angry or not. In John chapter 16 and verse 2, Jesus said they shall put you out of the synagogue Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. And so people even kill God's people thinking they were doing the will of God. And there's some people, they would kill you as a Christian because you are a Christian if they thought they'd get away with it. And they'd even think they were doing the will of God. Many religious people have killed God's people because they thought they were doing the will of God. Remember I said religious, not saved people. His job was to crow at the success of another. And have you ever thought about that? His job was to crow at the success of another. Many times when the old mother hen would lay an egg and she would start cackling about it, the old rooster start crowing. That was a success of another. Mother hen laid an egg, he crows about it. And so he crows at the success of another. And God's people, when we see people successful, people getting the job done, People winning souls, churches growing, people being blessed. We need to uh, be proud of that. Like the old rooster, we need to crow about that. Praise the Lord and, and encourage him. Say, thank God that you're getting the job done. We'll follow you. We'll hold your coat. Keep at it. Keep on doing what you can for God. Oh, green-eyed jealousy is as cruel as the grave. God's people should never be jealous of what another Christian can do for God. We ought to praise the Lord that they're doing something for God. 
The apostle Paul said, some of them preached to hurt me, but said, I thank God that uh, the gospel is preached. And so don't be jealous of your sister, brother in Christ and what they can do. Pray for them. Hold their coat and tell them to go at it. Get the job done. And don't be jealous. Green-eyed jealousy is a terrible thing. One of my greatest enemies, are you listening? And don't misunderstand me. Don't misunderstand me. One of my greatest battles since I've been in Athens, Georgia, some 30-some-odd years, is the fact that some got jealous of my poor, little, feeble efforts and took a stand against me and stabbed me in the back and tried to do me hurt. It's grieved me to the heart. Some of the people I've done the most for in my ministry and leaned over the furthest backward and sacrificed the more to help have done the most to try to hurt me or tear me down or do me harm and only because of green eye jealousy. I pray God that God will never let a jealous bone be found in my body. Beloved, listen to me. A lot of people have damaged themselves and hurt the cause of God because of green-eyed jealousy, which is as cruel as the grave. Amen. And trying to put another person's light out, many times you put your own out. We should thank God for people that's doing the job, boost them and push them on and say, Amen, go at it, brother. Get the job done. Do it. Do it for Jesus. And so this old rooster crowed when a hen laid an egg and she cackled about it and he crowed about it. Then finally, he did his job well. Here's a barnyard rooster that did his job well. I can't find any criticism of what he done. Jesus said he would crow and he did. And he did the job well. And what happened when he crowed when he ran back and I, I just kind of feel like he crowed the loudest he'd ever crowed in his life. And when he did, a backslidden preacher bowed his head and began to weep. And that preacher was Simon Peter. He remembered what the Lord said. The old rooster did the best he could. He crowed at the right time. He crowed so Simon Peter could hear him. He crowed whether people bragged on him or not. He had a job to do, and he did it. And when he did that job that God said he would do, then that old preacher bowed his head and began to weep. The Bible said that he wept, and in the original Greek, it implies that his whole body began to jerk and, and shake with sobs. Simon Peter wept. He wept like his heart would break. He wept because that rooster reminded him that he had denied the Lord. That rooster did what he could do. God said he would do it, and he did it. Are we doing what we can do for the Lord? If not, God help us. Stand to your feet. Father, I pray today in Jesus' name that you'll take the message, that you'll use it, now, dear God, if you used a barnyard rooster 2,000 years ago to bring a Baptist preacher to his knees, God, we believe that you can use thy people today that's willing to be used. Father, speak to this audience. Have your way in this invitation. Speak to the radio listen audience, dear God. And we thank you for what you do. In Jesus' name, amen. Now we're going to have an instrumental number by Debbie. And as she plays on the instrument, if you're here unsaved, or you're backslidden, or you want to join this church where we receive members, or for any reason that you want to come down here for help, I want you to move forward. We'll gladly help you if you'll come. While we wait for you now, will you come? How about it? You need to get saved. Come back to God. Join the church if for any reason God's impressed upon your heart to come. Will you come? Come on if God is speaking. This is your opportune time. The old rooster did what he could. Are you? Are you doing what you can?
Waiting just another moment, we have this young couple and son coming to join the church at Kenneth's for baptism. They have been saved and they now come in to join the church. We're waiting just another moment. Would you come? I was in their home some time ago and had prayer with them and helped them. Now they come in to unite with our church and I'm glad. Why we wait? Anyone else? God sending this young couple this way we feel like that they're going to be a blessing to our church and we're going to endeavor to do all we can to be a blessing and help to them <laughs> 